Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored, Lord, we will come in fellowship and presence here your word. Thank you most of all for Jesus. You said, Jesus, we might have life and have more abundantly. We give you all the praise and glory. We thank you, Lord, for our nation. We speak peace to our country, decree and declare the United States of America is a righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus, Jesus, Lord, and the United States of America. And Lord, we pray for our leaders, each one of them hearken unto you. We speak peace to our country and decree that our, our nation goes forth and prosperous and blessed in divine protection in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness, then they should come. We thank Lord for all those missionaries out there, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. They're preaching your gospel and the word of faith in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank that every day more people are receiving Jesus around the world. We thank you, Lord, we have a mighty revival sweeping our nation around the world. That every day, Lord, the power of God is a manifest, manifestation and people are receiving all that Jesus bought and paid for. And Lord, I thank for anointing me today that people say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me under the Holy Ghost. Now pray for us, Lord, as we hear your word and hear the Holy Ghost. We'll go forth and become doers of your word and led by spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Okay, let's have our Bibles over here to the book of Philippians, please. And we'll go to here. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Now, the scripture says here in Philippians chapter 4, we'll start here in this verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men in the Lord's hand. Be careful for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, lest your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which past understand, is shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brother, what things are true? What things are honest? What things are just? What things are pure? What things are lovely? What uh, things are good and important? If there be virtue, we praise, think on these things. Notice here in this verse 6 here says, let your quest be made known with thanksgiving. You know, it's good for us as believers to always be thankful. You know, we'd say amen in church about that, but no, I have a, a lifestyle of it. That we, we train ourselves to be thankful. Thankful for what we do have. Thankful for what we believe we receive by faith. And thankful for who we are in Christ Jesus. That Jesus came, that we might have life, number abundantly, and that he wants us to enjoy life. It's the enemy that comes with harassment, who brings the torment. Now, what we want to do as believers is stay uh, built up in God's Word. How we do that? By One way, by meditating on the Word every day. And not only that, by hearing God's Word taught. And remind ourselves, I'm what His Word says I am. The Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The Scripture says here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ, strength me. Now, just right there is a good place to build from. We can begin to thank God and praise God that we are what his word says we are. That we have what his word says we have. That we can do what his word says we can do. Now notice here, the scripture said in Philippians 4 verse 6, let your requests be made known with thanksgiving. That means thanksgiving is supposed to accompany our request. Maybe we gave the faith decree and told something to go. Or claimed something and told it to come. Or a blessing to manifest in our life. Or we pray the prayer of faith, the prayer of agreement. And we believe we receive what we prayed for, or what someone agreed with us for, or we agreed with them. Now, what can I do after that? Keep my mind on God's word, see myself with it, in Jesus' name. As a man thinks heart, so is he, Proverbs 23 says. Now, he gave us a guideline here about what to think about in Philippians 4, verse 8. Those things are honest and true and honest and just and pure and lovely. Well, that's what we need to focus on. I mean, many times people say, well, it's true. We know that's what they're thinking about and what they're talking about. Well, is it lovely? Is it a good report? Does it edify? No, but if it doesn't do that, then those are things really we need to not think about. We need to delete it. We're going to do that by resisting them, by saying, no, that's not my thought in Jesus' name. And saying, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to think that way. And decree and declare boldly what God's Word said about us. And there'll be challenges, you know, but hey, we're more than conquerors. We're world overcomers. And we triumph in Christ Jesus. And that's how we need to act as believers. And to be thankful. And to praise God for our blessings. I mean, one place we start out with is just praising God and thanking God that we're saved. That we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord, and build from there. The Bible teaches us that we give thanks for our food. You know, over here, and uh, go to your right a few pages, and come over here to First, uh, First Timothy chapter 4. Now the scripture says here, in uh, verse 3, Forbidding to marry and command stained meats, which God had created to see with thanksgiving, of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing be refused to receive with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. Notice here that we're supposed to give thanks for our food. You know, sounds kind of elementary, but 
that's a good place to be and you know and a good place to start. If we haven't started, start there. Then we thank God for for what what we have, the food that we have. You know, one time I was listening to a person that uh, I was up this doing this, going to do this Bible study. I was at this place, and and a lot of these people were homeless. And they were taken into like uh, kind of like a shelter thing, and so I was there to teach. And I, I got there early. I was sitting around there, and I, there was a man sitting there. He'd been homeless and had a real rough time in life for a long time, you know, probably close to sixty years old. And there was a woman, or his friend, sitting next to him. He was eating, and he had this chicken. Um, I don't know what it was, some kind of chicken dish he was eating, just chicken. Somehow it was prepared. I don't know if it was barbecued or what. I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to him, but I heard him say, you know, she said to him, do you like it? In other words, you like what you're eating? He said, you know, I learned that whatever I get is what I, what I have before me or whatever opportunity I have to eat today, I take advantage of it and eat it. In other words, he said, I don't have a choice. See, he's homeless, been living on the streets for a long time. And whatever little bit of food he could get come access to, I mean, it could be in a dumpster. It could be some donuts that were thrown away. Well, notice here, he, he, he didn't have a selection, really. Now, many of us have selection. You know, we go to the refrigerator and look around and say there's nothing to eat. Well, what we mean is that there's nothing there really right now what I want to eat. And on and on and on like that. Well, regardless, we want to be thankful. Now, Jesus had five loaves and two fish. But he's got over 5,000 people there. He's got a feed. Theologian said there's probably close to 15,000. But nevertheless, let's go with the five. So he, he's got all those people there. He wants them to eat. He wants to feed them. All they've got is five loaves and two fishes. Now what did Jesus do? He gave thanks for it. And by doing so, in verse 11, this is in John chapter 6, he gave thanks for it. Thank, he thanked God for it. And, and told the disciples to pass it out. And they did. And they fed over 5,000 people. Now think about it. And had 12 baskets left over. Now, how did this happen? Well, what did Jesus do? He gave thanks for what he did have. He gave thanks to God for what he did have. And the miracle took place. Now, this will do much more by being, being thankful. It's easy to murmur and complain, talk about what you don't have and what people did to you or what they didn't do for you. And have that mentality and live like a victim and, not, and be ungrateful and unthankful. No, we can turn that all around. And begin to cause ourselves to be thankful, be grateful. Think of something that, that you're thankful for and build from there. Are you thankful that you're saved? Thankful that your name's in the land's book of life? You know, the disciples were casting out devils and, and they came back rejoicing. Jesus said, rejoice that your name's written in the land's book of life. In other words, in heaven. Well, think about this. They had something they could be thankful for. Paul and Simon were in jail and they sang praises unto God in Acts 16. And they got a supernatural released by the power of God. Probably the angels came in and did it. But nevertheless, this is what happened. Now think if they complained and murmur. Well, they could have died in that condition. And, and, and uh, Jonah was in the middle, belly of that fish. So what did he do? The Bible says in Jonah chapter 2, he gave thanks even to God. And he got released. Think about this. That would be a horrifying situation to be in to your mind and your emotions. But nevertheless, what did he do? He gave thanks to God. That's one of the things he did. He gave thanksgiving to God. What did Paul and Silas do? They began to sing praises unto God. At midnight. And the prisoners heard them. Like one preacher said, the only prisoners heard them, God heard them. But, but think about this. What Jesus did when he had five loaves and two fishes, he gave thanks. So I thought about that man that had been homeless for a long time. How he was, you know, I was just getting prepared there to do the Bible study. But I happened to overhear him say that. Think about the selections you and I have. What we can wear and what we can eat. Well, there's a place to start. We read here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, we th give thanksgiving for our food, what we're going to eat. Thank you, Lord, for it. In Jesus' name. So you're complaining, and, you know, the, the fries are cold, and the service is lousy, and I'm just going to, I'm going to post on their website and let them know I didn't like the way they treated me. You really want, you, you really want to leave that way? Maybe you kind of want to rethink this. You know, you don't know what the person's going through. We're not going to, we're not overcomers by complaining. No, we count it all joy in Jesus' name. And we just show the devil that nothing affects us. And what we need to do is be grateful and be thankful for what we do have. There's always going to be, you know, something you can complain about. Well, how about being thankful? You know, instead of using your authority to get somebody in trouble, why not be thankful? You know, praise the name of Jesus. In upstate, a lot of hotel rooms, sometimes almost over, th over 300 sleeping rooms a year. And did a little bit of traveling, you know, you go from one place to the next. 
You got all kinds of service you're going to run into, and you can complain. You could get the housekeeping in trouble. You could let them know or complain until they give you a free, a free night someplace else or there again. Or send the food back that they deliver for room service. Well, you know, that could be done. Or you could give thanks and think about, you know, what about the person who delivered it? Maybe they're going through something. See, it's easy to get in the flesh and let it begin to make our decisions for us. But no, we want to just make sure we just thank God and praise God. And so when it comes time to fill out the comment card that they want you to comment on, instead of putting the bad grades on there, I mean, maybe this be something you want to think about before you do it. What we give out is how it comes back to us. And so as a believer, we, we need to maintain gr gratitude and thanksgiving and be generous. That we're always generous and grateful. Generous with what we have to give to others. Grateful to God for what he's given us. Now he's blessed us. And just have that kind of lifestyle in Jesus' name. And just begin to, report, re, begin to praise God. Have a good report in the name of Jesus. I don't, you know, I've eaten a few restaurants. Sometimes, you know, every day for years and years and years. Traveling, preaching. I don't think I've ever one time ever sent food back. You know, you'll have to follow God for yourself. But I found out you're going to do a lot better in life by being thankful. By praising God and thanking God. And Christians can really get, the, they can ruin their testimony by complaining and being upset and letting the manager know, let me, I, I need to tell the manager what's going on here. Well, again, I'd encourage you to, you know, you know, follow God on that. You know, think about this. The disciples said, Jesus, but what are they among so many? Five loaves and two fish, plus we don't have enough money to feed them. They want to send them away. But that's not what Jesus did. And Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, li lives in every believer. What would Jesus want us to do in this situation? You know, we hear that all the time. I got that. But, you know, really in our spirit, we'll have the answer in our heart. What does God want me to do about this? And you can be in a position that you've got authority in, in situation. And you could, you reprimand people, get them in trouble for what they did. Service wasn't that great. Food wasn't that great. But we read there in 1 Timothy chapter 4 to give thanks for it. There's people all over the world. That, that man I'm thinking about, he'd love to have the food that we were going to send back. He liked how to look at a menu. He could have picked out what he wanted. But he fell on hard times, or hard times fell on him, and was trying to wreck his life. And you think about this, you know, there's so many things we're tempted to gripe about. I mean, we live in a very sensitive, you know, society today where people are ungrateful about everything. No matter what, they find something to complain about. No matter what the leader of the country did, there's something wrong they did. They don't look for the good. But as a believer, you don't want to get that fighting spirit. You don't want to get that ungrateful spirit, that murmuring spirit that tries to get, get a hold of a person. And this is what it does. It just wrecks their joy. No, be thankful. Praise the name of Jesus. Thanking God and maintaining the victory. You're going to be a lot more joyful in life when you're grateful, when you're thankful, when you show gratitude. And I just thank God for that. Well, praise God for that. You know, this is a way that we can be grateful. So being upset at the cable company, the cell phone company, all these people, I'm going to get them told they, they charged me too much last month. Not last month, They're just out to rip you off. I know believers that talk that way. Well, if the same person would probably say God's their source and God supplies all of my needs. Well, they're saying one thing outside their mouth and then say something else outside their mouth. You know, <laughs> I saw a post one time recently of these little, five little children. One of them's a little bit taller than others. They were little children. And they were in some, um, you know, some poverty-stricken area. And the little boy's the tallest. He'd taken off his, his sandal, and he held it up in front of everybody like this. And there, all the kids are behind him. And he's pretending like he's got a cell phone, and he's doing a selfie. And all those kids were so happy. I thought to myself, that, think about how all those kids, you know, looked like they had nothing to eat. And yet they found something to be happy about. You don't want to lose your happiness as a believer. You don't want to lose your joy. In the midst of, you know, James said, count it all joy. You know, that it can be hard on the flesh, you know. You could be crying inside, but, you know, you make yourself begin to praise God and thank God for the blessings. And actually, that's how we want to live as believers. They're always grateful for what we do have. For what we, we're always thankful for what we do, what we're able to do, and what we believe that we receive by faith and who we are in Christ Jesus. 
Be thankful for what we have. Jesus gave thanks when he, had, when he didn't have enough. And think about this. It was all multiplied and fed all those people until they were full. Everybody ate till they, they wasn't everybody just got a bite of a sandwich here. No, everybody ate till they were full. And Jesus said, gather fragments to remain, then, then nothing be lost. And they gathered up 12 baskets load. And praise God for that, you know. It's, a, it's important that we stay thankful and, and, and be generous to bless other dear people, to help other dear people out, give what we've got. We do that in tithing, we do that in giving, but also just extend it from that to other people. You don't even have to know the people to be a blessing to them. And look for a way, look for an opportunity. And God will give us opportunities to be a blessing to someone else. And we can just keep planting those seeds because they're going to grow. They're going to come back. But Jesus taught us that when you give, it should be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. She'll mingle. But sooner or later, it's going to come back. You know, this, as a kid growing up, we had this garden. Now, I'm not talking about one you know, it's this wide. I'm talking about, as a kid, it's longer than you can see next to our house. And then we also had this out, out the farm, out in the country, we had this what we called truck patch. And it was definitely... You couldn't see the end of that. Not when you're 10 years old and you got to weed it. So uh, I remember my uncle had, uh, he was raising soybeans. And he said, Jesse, he said, I'll tell you, son, I'll give you 10 cents a row if you uh, pull, go out there and pull out the milkweeds on each row. Now, you got to realize this is 40 acres long. And you de <laughs> 10 cents per row, you know. It'd take you forever just to do one row. I kind of passed up on that one. Now, if he told me I had to do it, that had been different. But he gave me a challenge. But anyway, so we had these gardens. And, uh, you know, and, and I heard the one we had next to the house uh, in, in town, heard all the kids, they're playing ball and playing with the girls and guys all together, the neighborhood kids. They're, they're just out having a good time. Well, my dad gave me his bag of beans. This is springtime. And he's got everything all plowed. He made all these rows to plant these beans. He had to go somewhere. And I said, I want you, before you go and do anywhere, Jesse, I want all, I want the whole bag planted. Before you go do anything else. And so uh, he took off. And I looked at all those rows he'd made. And again, it's, it's going to be dark. You know, time I'm done with this. So he said, I could leave after I planted the whole bag. I thought, okay. So I took that whole bag. And I poured it down one row. The whole row. Then I covered up all the rows. It looked like everything got planted. And I ran off and played to all the other kids. Had a great time, you know. Well, then that night it rained. Probably raining the next day. And a few days later, just, you know, probably less than a week, they started popping up. They started growing. You know, people, you know, coming up, bean sprouts coming out of the ground. Well, Dad's out there at the garden looking at it, and I'm standing next to them. Oh, boy, here they come. Well, it looked like some of the plant, it looked like a row of bushes, of beans, and nothing else in the rest of the garden. And I'm thinking, oh, I got caught now. And he said, well, you know what? I, I can't say anything to you. I did the same thing when I was a kid. <laughs> But the point is, when you give, what we give out, Jesus taught us. He said, give and it should be given to you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, running over. Shall men give your bosom for the same measure with all? Shall be measured unto you the way you measure it out? See, we sow bountifully, right? We, we reap what? Bountifully, right? We sow sparingly. Yeah, then that comes back sparingly. The way we sow is the way it's brought back to us. And now you and I are to live this way as believers. They're always grateful, thankful to God. And, and show gratitude to people. And also be generous. And live our lifestyle that way. It makes Christian life a lot different. Because the Spirit of God is able to use us to be a blessing to other people. I mean, what's more rewarding than that? Knowing that you're able to be a blessing. makes someone else's life a little bit easier. A lot easier. By helping them out. A lot of people need help today. And, you know, they're really afraid. They're kind of hunkered down. And there's all kinds of things that you and I can be... Show appreciation to God and be able to bless somebody else. And just by contacting people. You know, maybe something, not something that we really want to do, but we know in our heart we're supposed to stay in contact with. They may not appreciate it. They may not even, may irritate it, you know. But it's important to stay in contact. And may keep giving out of our life and keep giving out of our life. Jesus taught us, if you give your life away, you get to keep it. it. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But if you withhold it, it tends to poverty. No, we're so blessed. There's always some, not just give out the stuff we're not using anymore. Or that's kind of, we've, we've you know, it's, it's served its purpose for us. You know, the, the, no, see, giving seeds that mean a lot to us. Planting those seeds. Something we'd like to have give, given to us. 
You know, that's, that's what we need to plant. And that, that makes a witness to other people. People need to be taught about how to give. They need to be taught today about being grateful. You know, that's, 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 how, that's, that's why it's so good to, to be always be grateful and be thankful. Because that teaches other people to be thankful and be grateful. You know, that's how people learn. You know, it's not we're doing it to be seen, to be like we're good people. I mean, we no, but the people are going to, they're going to see you do things. They're going to know you did things. You know, and, you know, no matter how much you, how much you work to hide it, it's still going to be, it's still some people are going to find out about it. But that's not the purpose we're doing it. We're doing it because we love people. We want to be a blessing. And we want to do what Jesus led us to do. I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. Nathan, you clothed me. I was sick, and you came and visited me. I was in prison, and you came and visited me. Well, when we ever do this to you, in other words, when you reserve in these conditions, Jesus says, much you did to one of these little ones, you did it unto me. And that plants a seed inside of us. And it's able to be a blessing. Me and my neighbor boy, again, where I don't know how old I'm going to guess maybe 12 or so, we got to go downtown, take the bus downtown and go to the movies. And so uh, we had just enough money to, get the, you know, to go in to, for the movie and get some popcorn. So we went to the movie, watched the movie, and it's, it's daytime. And so we eat the popcorn, we come out of the theater, and we have just enough money to take a bus back home. Or to walk that's like, I don't know, probably, probably three miles or so, to walk home. Well, he said, let's just go over here at this place and get a, a fountain of Coke. And I thought to myself, I, see, I've never done this before. And I thought, you know, but then we got to walk all the way home. Okay, that'd be a problem. I walk. So we're th so thirsty because we ate that popcorn with all the salt on it. So we go in this place. We sit down at the bar, and he orders a Coke. And I'm trying to look up the menu up there. That's up there, how much the Coke costs? Because what happens if this Coke costs more than what we got? Each one of us getting a Coke. I'm looking up there trying to find it, and I hear some of the waitress comes over and takes the order. You know, both of us want a Coke, and some man came by and said they. Uh, I, yeah, both of them had a cheeseburger and french fries. And the lady looked at him, and she, I guess you know, she must have known something here. And so she told the cook to you know, fix this up. Well, I'm scared, because we don't have any money. How are we going to pay? I can't pay, barely pay for the Coke. And this is my first time to be in it. It was like a Frisch's restaurant. You know, big boy. And I, I don't know, the guy I'm with, he actually, you know, he just thinks nothing of it. And all the time, you know, <laughs> sorry, finally the food comes. And the guy I'm with, he starts eating like a dog, you know, and I'm scared to eat this because you get a lot of trouble those days. You know, they, they can, you definitely get in trouble doing something like that. Not, you know, today I don't think they can do anything to you. And so this man came up to me. And said something to me. He said, just remember this day. Someday you're going to be feeding a lot of people. And walked away and got in his convertible Cadillac. He had a white shirt on and drove away. And that was a plea that was planted. When you give, it affects other people. I don't know what it did to a friend of mine that I was in that day. But what that man did change, helped change my life. I'll never forget that incident. You see, when you do give, it's a witness of someone else. We don't do it to be seen, but people are going to find out what we did. You can't hide everything when you do good works. But the motive is we do this unto Jesus. Now, we'll always say amen in church about that. No, that's why we practice our life. We stay grateful and we're always generous. And we're always a blessing to someone else. We don't have to know them. We don't have to get a thank you. We don't have to get any recognition. But it's so important as a believer that we stay grateful and we're always generous. And our country needs to do that. Everybody needs to live this way. And I believe to solve all the problems so many we have today is for people to be thankful. Instead of saying things and posting on people's websites, stuff, at restaurants and places of business, how you didn't like it, how you were treated, think, think about that for a moment. See what the Lord would have you to do. Follow that. Go by what you got in your heart. You'll do a lot better in life when you're grateful and when you're generous. And people need to see generous people today. 
And they need to see people that's grateful. That's how they learn. You know, I was in a place of business and, you know, it's a fast food place. And I was in there and, and there was a kid there, he's probably 18, 19 years old, and he's supposed to sweep the floor there in the lobby. And, you know, I'm watching him. Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing some work too. I got some paperwork there I'm doing. And uh, I'm watching him. He doesn't know how to use a broom. Now I'm thinking to myself, how could you be 19 years old and not know how to use a broom? And so he went back to the manager. The manager comes out. She's probably, you know, 40s or 50s and comes out and shows the person who's, you know, seems to be totally normal how to use a broom. Now, how, think about the youth thought, well, maybe he'd learn that at home, right? You know, mom would have taught him how to use a broom or whatever it'd be. Now, how did, how did he learn? She, she showed him how to do it. And as believers, when we're being grateful and generous, that shows other people how to do it. I learn from watching people. I watch everybody, you know, so to speak. And you can pick up something that they do better than you do. Everybody knows something that I don't know. And everybody can do something better than I can. But if I learn by watching them, seeing what they do, then that's going to help me learn. How, how do you learn by giving? Watch other people that give. One way. How do you learn about being grateful? Watch people that seem like always grateful. I mean, I know some people that I could run down and get two bagels and bring it back, and they're so thankful. You thought they haven't eaten a week. And yet they, you know, they make good money and have a, you know, a great lifestyle. But they're so thankful for it. Now, the guy I was talking about earlier that was homeless, he didn't have a selection. He's just going to eat whatever he can find today. Maybe what soup kitchen is going to have whatever today. So that's why he was telling that woman friend of his, when she said, do you like the chicken? He said, well, I've learned just to eat whatever, whatever I get a chance to eat. I, don't, I never get to pick what I want to eat. You know, when you and I look at the refrigerator, we get to pick what we want to eat. And we go to the pantry, we get to pick what we want to eat. It may be low, maybe not have what we, you know what we want in there right now. We don't have ketchup for a sandwich, but you know that's that's not comparison. Not have a selection. And by being thankful and being grateful, think about this: when Jesus gave thanks for those five loaves and two fishes, he don't have enough. The disciples are ready to give up. They're letting them know we don't have enough money. We don't have enough food. Now those th conditions comes to everybody. But what did Jesus do? In the midst of not having enough money and not having enough food to feed the people, what did he do? Verse 11, he gave thanks to God. And look what happened. What would happen if you and I did that? That we're facing a kind of situation and we just don't have enough. What do we do? Well, one thing we can learn what Jesus did, he gave thanks. And Jesus gave. He always gave. And that's how we learn from him. And God will put people in our life that are examples in these areas. They're just always thankful. Sure, they got their moments. They're always giving. And sure, they have temptation not to. But those are people we learn from. They're like a living epistle, open epistle. And we want to gravitate to that and learn how to apply that. Just like that stranger that came up and apparently he paid for the food. And I didn't even know it. He must have gave that... Waitress, you know, a signal from his face, his eye contact. I'm taking care of this to make sure the boys eat. He didn't say that. And I was so scared at the time. I, I couldn't enjoy the meal. <laughs> My first time having cheeseburger and french fry in a, in a restaurant, you know. The other guy I'm with, he's, he's doing this like he did it all the time. Father God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much. You gave us your only begotten son. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord? Maybe you're not sure, or you know you've never done it. Today's your day. God wants you to receive his son, Jesus Christ, because God wants, you to, be, wants to become your heavenly father. And the Bible tells us how to receive Jesus. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, if you're not sure or if you've never done it, let's do it today. Let's, let's pray this prayer and receive Jesus Christ, the Lord, today. I'm going to read these three scriptures from Romans. Then I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me if you're not sure or if you know you haven't done it. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, Verse 9, verse 10, verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe thy heart God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believe the righteous, and with the mouth confession made salvation. Verse 13 says, For whosoever called the name Lord shall be saved. It's real simple. Asking Jesus in our heart. So say that, pray this prayer with me. Say it with your mouth, loud enough, at least you can hear yourself say it. And receive Jesus Christ, your Lord, today. Just pray this after me, please. God, I come to you today. Just say this, God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. 
I believe in my heart and I confess my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins to the cross, took my judgment of sin, died, was buried, and God raised the dead. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. Thank you that your blood has cleansed me from all sins. And thank you, Jesus, that you protect me that I never go to hell. And I pray all in Jesus' name. Amen. The most important part of that prayer is that you're saying Jesus is Lord. Now, I want to encourage you to get a Bible, a physical Bible, you can, you know, online or someplace, and, and start reading the Gospel of John. Find a church to go to. If you're not going to church to preach the salvation, find a church to go to that preaches Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's the most important thing about that church. Maybe you got a loved one, been witnessing about the Lord, they'll tell you what church to go to. Now, passion church is going to help you grow and help spiritually and get involved. Help them out. Do whatever they do. Do what you can. You know, tithe, give, and volunteer to help out. That's going to help you grow and develop spiritually. If you've got a prayer request, you can email if you'd like to at jesserichministries.com. we got church on the phone tonight where it's a conference call. That's at 7 o'clock. That phone number and access code should be right on our Facebook page. So you can take advantage of that. And plus, we have communion, so prepare yourself for that. And I just want to thank you for watching watch today. I want you to know I'm standing with you, that you're healed, you're delivered, you're redeemed. And every one of your needs are met in abundance. Till next time, it's Brother Rich I love you. I'm praying for you. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough.